Hi! <laughs> Hello, ladies, gents, and disastrous drunks. Here's the thumbnail that I made for the video about Disco Elysium and how disappointed I was with the ending. It doesn't quite qualify as a speed paint because speed paints technically are supposed to be under three hours. This one took five and a half. I think it's running right now at like 30 times speed, 40 times speed. It's a it's a pretty big sp speeding up of the process. The main two reasons why it took so long was, well, the main reason was I was trying to emulate the gorgeous painting art style of Disco Elysium art that, that it has. It has this this awesome canvas-like quality to it, where it's just all color, there's no, no real lines. And, you know, I have spoken in other uh, speedrun, not speedrun, speed paints, in which that I posted before, how I have a pretty rigid workflow. I do the rough composition sketch, then I do some solid line art, and then I color that line art. Skipping the whole line art thing, just doing a rough composition and then just throwing colors at the canvas, was uh, quite the struggle. It took, you don't notice it much when it's all sped up like this, but there is a lot of putting colors down and then taking them back because it looked like a complete mess. I think it turned out pretty decent in my biased opinion, but there was some serious struggle with how to to make it work, especially in the figure that comes later, the, the painting of Dora herself. And the second reason was the background was a major, major pain in the butt. There must be a method out there to create good looking but efficient, quick to make backgrounds for a painting because, you know, they're like literally the background. You don't really want the focus of the painting to be in it. You just want something that looks decent, looks realistic or, or you know, looks appropriate. But you don't want to spend a ton of time with it. What you want to spend time with is the the main protagonist figure that you want in the to come out to pop out at you if that methodology exists i don't know it <laughs> so i spent a lot of time and you'll see the portion of time that i spend on this painting i believe that probably it's two to one maybe two uh two thirds and then one third of the time will be on the actual figure so it's it's a lot of time that i spent on uh, making a somewhat decent background to accompany this lady. I mean, obviously you want it to look nice and recognizable. You'll see the reference flashing now and then. All I have for reference was the screenshot of the scene that happens in the, the game. And then also um, actual Dolores Day because the character is, is based on her. So, you know, I'm just trying to translate it kind of like shift the camera to where Harry is looking you will see also that it doesn't completely match it does like the camera is looking at this street a little too high up and it looks like then uh, Dolores or I guess Dora is just floating in the air but just ignore that it's all just uh, a suggestion and not trying to be a realistic yeah I'm going to stick with that the, so you know it's 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 quite the infuriating process to throw colors in there and just try to make them work like like this you'll see i am just putting down purples and and, and and blues trying to make the architecture where usually i will just make black lines and make those into a building and then i will color those lines so that was what took most of the thinking about uh, about this painting was just trying to figure out kind of like dithering a lot of hesitation a lot of just staring at it of course when it sped up you don't really notice this but it was a lot of just staring at it. how do i continue how do i continue it's and i then i just oh, i'm just gonna do this and <laughs> you know trying to make it work it took uh took a lot of doing it was pretty infuriating and overall in the end like obviously i am pleased enough to put it out there but it's like it's it didn't completely match the expectation that I had going in. It, it doesn't look as good as I was hoping it would turn out, but just good enough. The fun part of this whole thing is just working on the figure. And here, yet again, you can see how I'm struggling. I'm trying to make a figure out of just colors, skipping, trying to use only that rough sketch. And this is really not working out. I'm like... I don't like the look of this. She looks like she has Down syndrome right here. It's just absolute garbage. So I was like, scrap it. Scrap it completely. 
maybe I can shift it around a little bit down and I just scrap it completely restart this thing get a little bit of reference here and at least you can use the skin color that, that they have in that painting and you can go from there and here's me giving up on I'm just going to make colors no 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 I need a little bit of lines to make this work otherwise I'm going to spend the next 40 hours in here and that is the main concern that I had it's like okay I'm just going to give up a little bit on this painting art style which I don't even know if that's the process that they followed wonder if the artist for Disco Elysium if I remember I'll, I'll put a little uh, freeze screen of uh, Disco Elysium uh, promotional art so you can see what I'm talking about wonder if the process for them was to make actually really good line art but then you you cover that up completely with colors I don't know I don't know but it seems like you know you just need more experience this is the thing with my motivations as an artist and why I don't really improve all that much is because I am extremely goal oriented I just have a thing that I want to have some art for and I will create that art for the thing I never draw for the sake of drawing and getting better I just don't I just don't feel motivated to do that I always need some kind of mission and I want to accomplish that mission and that is why this painting exists right now and I will learn to do it however I need to do it just to get it done and that is the problem like I am not learning process I'm not learning proper techniques I'm just doing things until something works well enough and that's good enough you know so I'll I don't, I'm not learning properly. I'm definitely learning. Like, I definitely feel like I learned a lot drawing this. Just not properly. Like, I'm not doing uh, something that will be a long-lasting lesson of f finding myself in a situation where I want a certain art style and okay I know exactly what to do I just follow this step the step the step the step uh, because I've done it before and I know the process and it's not eh, I'll just wing it <laughs> that's, that's my my philosophy thankfully uh, it ends up like once I bash my head against it enough hours it will come out to a point where it's somewhat decent just trying to uh, make the shape something that I am somewhat proud of is is this hand right here maybe it's a little too small but it's like purely throwing colors into the background here and just maybe looking at my hand a little bit to see how it looks and it looks like, like a hand with some highlights in there the bone structure is there and like that's exactly what I'm I was hoping for trying to do this like just throw colors onto the canvas and it actually ends up looking at the object that I'm trying to make so you know that's uh that was my stated goal, so I accomplished it in a tiny, tiny way. And something that I was really happy with is that I didn't struggle with it. Usually hands, you know, the typical artist nightmare is just hands are such a huge struggle. For this one, it was like the easiest thing. It was easier even than the face or the hair. Something that the hair is like the favorite thing you can possibly work. And probably all artists are like, yeah, hair is, is the greatest thing to draw. It's just so much fun to throw those flowing lines. It's always a always perhaps the most satisfying you can do at some point very very soon I will realize this arm don't look right <laughs> this arm doesn't look right at all I think it's a little bit later though uh, like the puff is way too big uh, this is the first time that I notice it but I'll notice it again because uh, it's like where where's the elbow joint here where's going on let me just let me just sketch oh oh that's where the elbow goes that's not right <laughs> <laughs> so I had to uh, move things around and redo it. A beautiful, beautiful per uh, perk of digital painting. Something that I really appreciate and probably why, uh, other than, you know, laziness and not having the proper materials, why I do it in, in the, the digital space. Because it's so nice. It, 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 you can cut so many corners with just moving things around it just lets you do that so easily it's an excellent boon that otherwise maybe like I, I used to draw all the time on paper and while fun and it's satisfying it will be very frustrating to make mistakes I have to erase them and you can't really correct them so the learning process I feel it takes much longer it probably sticks with you more because those mistakes are right there in your face and to correct them you have to start from scratch to do another painting that looks better but I think it's a it's a fine compromise for me just to have the convenience here's just working on the hair 
having uh, all kinds of the best kind of fun possible. Really enjoy throwing those flowing lines. Something that I feel uh, I've gone a little bit better on is making that big contrast and the highlights of the hair, making it look kind of realistic. I'm pretty, pretty proud of uh, in this painting. Everything's kind of, I don't know, mediocre. The hair, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm happy with it. Uh, what else can I tell you? Just uh, ultimately now I'm just concerning myself with a little bit of lighting, kind of not trying to think about the background because the background, I like, you'll see, you see that the right hand side of this uh, painting, that right hand blank space, every time while I'm drawing this, I'm like, oh, oh I need to do that whole side. Oh, geez, what am I going to put? Oh, I know this, the screenshot looks like a wall I'm going to have to like copy it and stuff this is gonna take how much longer is gonna take two more hours to just to do that size it's gonna be a nightmare so I'm just trying to do uh, nothing about it just oh, let's just you know create the letters nicely make sure that everything looks good on this side we'll concern ourselves because at this point I'm not even uh, I'm not even sure does this background even work like it, it looks too washed out it looks kind of shoddy I never really fix it. <laughs> it just makes it a little bit darker. It's something that helps a lot. And tangentially, there is a, a freaking Portal 2 video that explains this really well. How lighting makes a piece of art so different. And you can rely a ton on the way that you use lighting. And maybe that is part of that whole uh, method that you can use to create backgrounds much more easily. Just use lighting to block certain parts, blur others, and just take attention away from the background and just darken it and stuff. And here is when I had the genius, genius idea, I tell you. It was like, I don't need to draw this. I'll just copy and paste it. <laughs> it's like, you know, it did not learn as much as I would have if I had just drawn it. But damn it, I feel proud of that shortcut. It saved me so much time. It's like, you know what? I'll just, just copy this and paste it over here. Use a little bit of perspective work and uh, cover up all the pixelation. It works just fine. A little bit of darkening later will just just bring it all together. Make sure that you know the lighting is uniform all through the background. And uh, it worked out pretty nicely. And all that needs to happen here is just uh, darken up that background and that will make it so that Dora pops out way more and you don't really look at all the terrible imperfections of the background. I really did want the letters, the video Revachol, especially Revachol, to stick out quite a bit because uh, you know it's it's part of the game and the setting and then when you get to the end a bit of a fault of mine is like I don't use enough contrast. It always feels like I'm using enough when I'm drawing it and then you come back later with the lighting curves I was like oh this could have been looked so much better if I had used way more contrast so you know you kind of put a band-aid on it at the end with the lighting curves and it's not the same as using proper colors from the start but you know it makes it look better pop off a little bit more I really like the halo around her hair it just looking like a, like she's surrounded by this light and being you know from the sunset Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. It took, like I said, about five and a half hours, and that sounds like a long-ass time to create a thumbnail. The whole thumbnail objective was kind of tangential. I also was terribly emotionally invested in this game, so I was, like, genuinely in interested in creating some fan art for it. So, you know, that is what I accomplished. Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Until then, just pour your heart out. On to the next painting.